Hey dudes, I'm Hyla and today on Hyla Cooking we're talking all about mashed potatoes. It's a dance and a thing you can eat. We're gonna do three versions of mashed potatoes. Classic, fluffy, creamy mashed potatoes with butter, a horseradish mashed potatoes, and a jalapeno cheese mashed potatoes because I like it spicy. <music> important thing about making mashed potatoes is the kind of potato that you use. Starchy potatoes are the best. Starchy examples are russet potato, which everyone's familiar with, and Yukon gold, which might be a little bit less familiar. Both of these are starchier than a red potato, which means that they'll mash up and be fluffier and also be able to absorb more milk and cream and butter and whatever the hell you want to put in them so they get you know, lots more flavor. Mashed potatoes are a little bit tricky sometimes because they are best if they're served within like 20 minutes of mashing them when they're still nice and fluffy and hot. But I'm gonna show you a couple tricks to sort of make them partially ahead of time. So the first one is you could do this like up to two days ahead of time, I would say. Um, peel your potato. If you like a more rustic potato, you totally also don't have to peel them. And you get more fiber and vitamins and stuff that way too. So you might notice whenever you um, peel a potato, they kind of start to oxidize pretty quickly and they'll turn brown like an apple does. Um, but, so you can do this, you could put them in the pot that you plan on boiling them in and then they'll be ready to stick on the stove and start boiling. Another thing you can do, and I do this all the time, is go ahead and boil your potatoes and then once they're soft and you can insert a knife all the way in really easily, then just turn the heat off and leave them in that hot water and they'll stay hot and they'll stay really hot for like 20 or 30 minutes. So you can just wait until serving time to drain them and then mash them really quick. So I've got um, a pot of Yukon Golds back there that have already been boiled and they're staying hot for me and I've got a pot of russets and I'm gonna start out by making classic mashed potatoes using a potato ricer. This is not a medieval torture device. This is this one probably costs like 14 bucks I think um, and they'll come with like three different sized um, grates or something. For potatoes you want to use the one with the largest holes and the most numerous holes and you just plop it in the bottom here and this little thing goes on to kind of hold it in place and we'll use this to press our potatoes. And in this pot I've got some heavy cream and some butter. I'm doing all of these recipes in this video on a scale of one pound of potatoes. One pound of potatoes will feed like four people if um, as a side dish if there's lots of other side dishes and maybe just like two or three if that's like the main side dish and one pound of potatoes is generally like two large potatoes. I like to do one pound of potatoes, a tablespoon of butter, and a quarter cup of heavy cream or half and half. Put our potatoes in and I forgot to mention earlier I also like to throw in a clove of garlic or maybe two cloves of garlic whenever I'm boiling the potatoes peeled and then I go ahead and mash them up with the potatoes. So then it just kind of goes all the way through like that. And you wanna also make sure that, that you drain the water off. If I were gonna do this whole pot of potatoes, I would drain it in a colander and then put the potatoes back into the empty pot and put them over low heat so that they kind of dry out a little bit. Um, if you ever ended up with watery potatoes, you probably left too much of the cooking water in there. I like to do my classic, classic potatoes with white pepper just so they, all the steam, it's like a facial over here, with white pepper just so they stay more like virginal. We're gonna add a little salt, just mix all these nice fluffy potato bits into the butter and the cream that we already had in the pot. And you can use whole milk or you can use half and half instead of cream if you wanna make them a little bit lower fat. But if you want the kind of potatoes that you get at like a fancy steakhouse, you wanna use heavy cream and a potato ricer. The next version, I'll show you how to do it with just a potato masher. Gorgeous. So these potatoes are ready to serve. Mmm, I'm gonna eat this whole pot so it's okay that I just contaminated the spoon. All right, so for the horseradish, I'm gonna use the Yukon Gold potatoes that I boiled and drained the water and let them dry a little bit, let them steam off. For the base of this, we're gonna start with the same. I'm gonna throw some of our potatoes into this pot with the butter and the cream. And then I'm using some prepared horseradish. If you're not familiar with horseradish, it's kind of similar to like wasabi or something like that. And it's like, it's very pungent and sort of mustardy and it's got a nice 
bite to it. I'm gonna use about two teaspoons for sort of a medium level of horseradishiness. If you are serving something like roast beef or prime rib or leg of lamb or something like that, I think that horseradish mashed potatoes are an excellent choice for a side dish. It goes great together. This is a potato masher. This is a bean masher, which I think would also work, although I've never tried it. Maybe I'll try it on the next batch. I'll try it on the next batch. Okay, we'll do an experiment live on camera. All right, let me add a little salt. And for this one, I'm gonna use some black pepper. And then just, I mean, this is all you're doing. I'm sure you've all done this before. And if you like them a little more lumpy, you can leave them lumpier. Get all that cream and butter from the bottom all mixed up. Something that's a nice touch for horseradish potatoes is a little bit of fresh dill, coarsely chopped, I'll throw that in. And if you like using fresh herbs in cooking, I also have put fresh basil in classic mashed potatoes, and that's a really nice addition, and it's a really surprising one. Let's try it. I mean, I'll try it. Mmm. It's not enough that someone's gonna be like, oh, this tastes like horseradish. It just kind of adds a nice, like, earthiness, and it brightens up a little bit. I think you'll like it, especially if you like horseradish. Okay, on to jalapeno cheese mashed potatoes. This is the most fun video ever just because I get to eat all kinds of mashed potatoes. For the jalapeno cheese mashed potatoes, we're gonna start a little bit differently. I'm gonna go over to the stove and saute some diced, or some minced rather, jalapeno and green onion in a couple tablespoons of butter. And if you want to cut the seeds out of the jalapeno to make it less hot, that's great, it's fine. Still have a nice jalapeno flavor. And just cook these over about a medium heat for two to three minutes until everything's softened. And then I've got my potatoes here that have been drained and then put back over low heat so there's no water left sitting in the bottom of the pot. And I'm gonna add my sauteed delicious part. The delicious part of the mashed potatoes. Don't forget to add that. And as promised, I'm gonna try to mash them with a bean masher and see what happens. I'm gonna add a little salt. Hey, it works great. Oh, it smells really good. Oh man. To this one, since we did a little bit more butter, I'm just gonna add maybe a couple tablespoons of heavy cream to moisten them up a little bit. And then a little grated cheese. I'm using a four cheese blend, but you can use any kind of cheese you want, probably. Hmm, well, maybe not with jalapenos, but I bet sauteed green onions and blue cheese would be really, really good. This would be really, really good with like, on the side of a, like a chicken milanesa or something, which I have a video for that. I'll put a card up here if you wanna see what that is. Oh, I can't wait to try this one. So leftover mashed potatoes are actually um, really, really good to have. I've got a couple ways you can use them. Potato taquitos, this jalapeno cheese, leftover mashed potatoes would be so delicious in a taquito. And then also a mashed potato waffle, which would probably go with any kind of mashed potato. It's a savory waffle, it's really, really good. Let me try these delicious, oh my God. Mmm, mmm. I love the jalapeno flavor with that. It is so, so good. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to click that little button right down there to subscribe. I hope that you try one of these mashed potato recipes or at least Im implement some of my mashed potato tips. Thanks again, and I'll see you next week with more videos. Okay, bye.